Shalom and God bless you. I'm Kaylee Kina. Uh, so I just wanted to make a video about how I had depression and anxiety for over 18 years of my life and I was really shy. I had a lot of fear when it came to any kind of confrontation or just talking to people in person and how God totally healed me and set me free from those things and I'll try not to make it too long but I, I thought it would I thought it was important to focus mainly on mental health and where I was where I came from and where I am now and I also struggled with um, addictions to marijuana and drinking But anxiety and depression, those were the major ones that I dealt with. And when I was 17, I tried to kill myself. So I had suicidal um, tendencies or ideations, whatever you want to call it. Not all my life, but uh, it happened a few times. I also went through trauma from abusive relationships and pretty much just PTSD. I had PTSD from different experiences that I went through in my life that were really traumatic. I'll try to keep it short. I don't want the video to be too long, but I thought this would be a good topic to focus on. So I'm just going to pray really quick. Abba Father, Heavenly Father, I ask you to guard my eyes Guard my ears, guard my heart, guard my mouth to only speak what you want me to speak. Just share the truth of your word and just help me to keep my mind focused on you. Do not let the enemy distract me and my thoughts. And I pray that this video blesses anyone that listens or watches it and draws them closer to you and just give them the eyes to see and the ears to hear the truth and deliver them from all evil. I ask you to send legions of warring angels to outrank and outclass anything demonic trying to come against anyone that listens and watches this broadcast or this video. Sorry, I'm used to streaming live. <laughs> and ministering angels to minister to anyone listening and watching. In Yeshua HaMashiach's mighty name I pray, amen. Oh <sighs> my goodness. Okay. So basically when I was four years old, fear came in. That's like the first traumatic memory I have. Um, I just wanted to play pool. I was at my grandparents' house on like Christmas or something and asked if I could play pool. I was told no. And I asked why. And my grandpa got really angry, said it was for adults only and thought I was being like sarcastic or something. <laughs> And he picked me up from my shirt and I was like choking by my shirt and just horrified. And he's just screaming at me. And um, that's where fear came in and anxiety. But it can be uh, an external ta attack from the kingdom of darkness also. Demons um, can try, try to attack us with anxiety and fear. So you don't want to come into agreement with those things. And perfect love casts out all fear. That's the revelation I got um, in 2020. Pretty much all of 2020, I just fasted and prayed, worshipped, spiritual warfare by singing worship, praising God, reading scripture out loud, declaring the word of God over my life, commanding demons to leave taking my authority in Christ over the demonic attacks because Luke ten nineteen says, behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. Not everyone understands or is aware of the fact that there is a spiritual realm and <laughs> demons are real. It's not some crazy nonsense fairy tale. It's the reality of the world that we live in. Just some people are carnal, carnal minded and not spiritually minded, but 
to focus on the topic at hand. So basically, I started singing when I was seven years old and dancing, and then I went into acting a little bit. I did like live theater, and I just, I wanted to be famous. I wanted to make a lot of money. I wanted to travel the world, but mostly I just wanted to sing and travel. And I ended up making an album when I was 12 to 14 years old. It took a while to make it. And I was invited to a radio music convention in Miami, Florida. And I got to sing in front of record labels and radio music industry people. And I had backup dancers and I wasn't even going to public school at the time. I was doing independent study and just focused on my singing career, trying to make it big. <sighs> Apparently I sang on the same stage as Christina Aguilera and Eminem before they got signed, before they got famous. And you're supposed to talk to the people after you perform. I sang four original songs and I went off stage and a man and a woman approached me and I was by myself and they're just like, we loved your voice. It was great. And I had a major anxiety attack. I just wanted to run. <laughs> and basically I said, thank you. I'm going to go back to my parents now. And I just went and sat in the audience and looked over the, the videotape that my dad recorded of the performance and missed out on one of the biggest career opportunity, the biggest career opportunities I've ever had in my life. Um, so I basically, I hated myself <laughs> for being so shy and for being afraid to talk to people and just for being awkward and I had to go back to public school and I just felt like a failure because like a lot of people I knew thought I was going to be rich and famous and they liked my little demo CD that I had and I made promises to buy cars for my friends when I got rich and famous but it's just looking back on it now it's just like ew I can't believe I was just so focused on fame when I literally got asked to sing Christian music when I was 12 and I said no because I didn't fully believe. And that's exactly what I want to do now is make gospel music, worship music, and travel the world and make albums. And that's what they offered. And I said no. But yeah, so I went back to public school. I was really upset about it. I didn't want to go back to public school because I was getting straight A's and um, basically I just didn't care anymore about school. I didn't care about anything. I just hated myself for being so shy and awkward and having such a hard time talking to people. <laughs> I never really felt like I fit in with any particular group. And I don't know. I, I ended up making friends with people that partied and I started going to parties. I started drinking and getting drunk at 14 years old and smoking weed and that just totally changed me. I went from being really quick-witted and clever. I, I was somewhat funny. I have my moments but like I feel like I did damage to my brain because your brain is still developing f during that time and it's not a good idea to be getting drunk and smoking weed. Um, And what's sad is like when I was 13 years old, I used to say like, oh, I'll never drink. I'll never do drugs. I'm not going to have sex before marriage because, well, mainly the, the drugs and alcohol. I was like, it's really bad for your brain and people act really stupid when they're, when they're drunk and doing drugs. So what's the point? But I ended up doing it anyways. But like, if I just want to listen to myself. Like, I must have been already born again because I did believe in Jesus when I was a kid. Like, I believed that he died for my sins. I think I knew that he was God, but, like, no one ever told me he was God. Just, I believed he was the son of God and that he died for my sins. So. 
And I used to sing Jesus Loves Me a lot after seeing Christina Aguilera for the first time. Destiny's Child opened for her and they sang that song and I used to sing it all the time. I didn't know why. But, uh, yeah, in high school, I just went through a very difficult time just hating myself and listening to really depressing music <laughs> and um, I barely graduated high school like I'm not stupid <laughs> like when I really try I can get good grades but I just didn't care <laughs> and I started um, listening to a lot of like heavy metal but funny funny enough a lot of like christian um rock music <laughs> like as i lay dying and some of my friends had christian bands and what i don't understand is like no one ever talked to me about god <laughs> when i went to those shows so that kind of frustrates me but i forgive them <laughs> like no one ever shared the gospel with me or anything but um I started wearing band t-shirts, I cut off all my hair, I started wearing ripped up dickies, I was in a punk band for a little bit, and when I was 17 I took a bunch of pills, hoping I wouldn't wake up, hoping I would just fall asleep and not wake up, but it didn't work, I'm still alive, thank god, because I would be in hell right now. Um, I ended up just being sick for like three days and no one really noticed except for my friend because my eyes, my pupils were really dilated. Like literally no one said anything but her. And I was like puking in trash cans and stuff. <laughs> and I used to like be sneaky and steal liquor out of my parents' cabinets and drink in my room by myself and lock myself in my room and play video games and try to escape the world and my feelings I guess I don't want to be like oh woe is me because I just I had a loving family and I had everything I needed but I just like craved love and affection so much and like I don't understand why I didn't like make the effort to try to make that happen more instead of just being alone in my room and like I don't know I know there was one time I like <laughs> I asked my dad like why don't we hug more I guess whenever I'd visit my grandparents we'd always hug and it always felt really good and he like made fun of me so that made me super sad but um no, I'd usually be in my room just playing and I don't know I just like never really had too many friends that were really close I had a lot of acquaintances and cool people that I met in my life at like various events and things and I don't know I've just been kind of a loner but I like being alone but it's like, I want love and affection also. But, uh, yeah, I just... After I graduated high school, I just, all I wanted to do was smoke weed and play video games. <laughs> I was a loser. I was a piece of crap. <laughs> like, and I was addicted to video games, to be honest. Like... My first true addiction was Call of Duty 1. <laughs> no, it was Medal of Honor Allied Assault. And like, I would play it on my brother's computer and he would get so annoyed because he would want to play on his computer. So eventually I had to just get my own computer. But uh, yeah, Call of Duty. I played a lot of shooters and I know now like our eyes and our ears are spiritual gateways to our soul. So, like, I was pretend killing people in all these video games and, like, a lot of people think it's just, oh, it's just harmless entertainment. I'm not actually killing anyone, but, like, it's 
hard to explain, but the fact that people get so angry and want to cuss and get like really, I don't even, I don't know what to say. Just the way people interact and the way you react when someone kills you in a video game, like you get angry and you want to cuss and it's like, ew, that's not a good thing. <laughs> Like back then, I used to cuss all the time and like in the culture, in the world, in the entertainment industry, like it's, it seems like it's an okay thing to cuss all the time, but God doesn't want us to be talking like that. That's how demons talk. <laughs> and it, it makes me uncomfortable to hear people cuss now. Like I know it grieves the Holy Spirit. God doesn't like it. Call me legal, leg <laughs> Call me legalistic, religious, that don't bother me. If you don't like the Jesus inside of me, then don't follow me. Yeah, KMF, Brian Trejo, E. Um, anyways. <laughs> uh, where was I going with that? But yeah, like, from what I've learned and experienced, people can literally get demons from the things that they watch and listen to. And I was entertaining myself entertaining myself with lots of depressing demonic sad evil stuff like <sighs> world of warcraft <laughs> five years of my life gone because of that game <sighs> like my, my friend would call me wanting to hang out and i would like purposely ignore my phone because I just wanted to stay home and play video games like that's so sad <laughs> like interacting and having special precious time with people you care about like there's nothing better than that like, yeah, I talked to people online while I was playing the game, but it's not the same. It's like, I regret so much of my past. And I know I've been forgiven, but it's just sad. <laughs> but uh, I was really rebellious when I was a teenager, too. Like, I stole from my dad. But I think it's just because, like, He would get angry at me for no reason sometimes and blow up. So I think it was just my like reaction to be being treated that way when I didn't deserve it. And then I ended up doing stuff that made me deserve to be yelled at. <laughs> like he could have put me in jail, but he didn't. So I thank God for that. I even caught, I got caught smoking weed in our house. I was upstairs and my dad had the house fan on and I didn't know it. So the smoke got sucked downstairs and I got caught and he ended up breaking my pipes and my bongs and my mom found weed sometimes. I'm not a fan of my past self. It's embarrassing to talk about these things. <sighs> I wish when I tell my testimonies that I could like explain it better with the timeline and chronological order because I just I go on rants and <laughs> I should have made like an outline or something I thought it would be easier to talk about this um but yeah I just I really wanted to fit in and I never felt like I fit in and I remember um going back to high school like all of my friends had already had, they lost their virginity already, already. And I just wanted to know what it was like. And they talked about it like it was so great. And <laughs> when I lost my virginity, I don't even remember how I met the guy. Like it must have been online or something. I went and saw a movie, went and saw Spongebob. It was a horrible experience. It was very degrading. <laughs> I 
And then after that, I actually found a guy that loved me and he wanted to marry me, but I wasn't ready for that. And I just wanted to party and I thought he was too clingy. I got annoyed by him. And I broke his heart. He's the guy that actually introduced me to World of Warcraft too. <laughs> but yeah, basically, um, I did a lot of sinful things and God made spiritual and moral law. And when you habitually sin and break God's spiritual and moral law, you're just giving Satan and demons legal right into your life. <sighs> My grandma is Spanish, or she was Spanish and Native American, and she used to love going to these like powwows, or just all like Native American stuff, and they would dance and sell different things, and she bought dream catchers for all of us, so I put one in my room, and I knew that they're supposed to help with nightmares, because I would have nightmares at times, and very strange dreams. Um, so that was, that was a huge open door to the demonic, into my life, into my home by putting one of those in my house and putting that belief that it would help with nightmares. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Abusive relationships, abortions, abortions. <sighs> That's a whole separate video I need to make is on abortions with my friend. But I think I was 21. And it was literally a guy that I met at a land center because my dad didn't allow me to play World of Warcraft in the house anymore. So I went to a land center just so I could play WoW and raid. <laughs> That's how bad it was. Like, how sad. Um, I ended up meeting a group of guys there. And one guy I hooked up with, I was like... He was dating someone already and I didn't know when I was like his side chick and then he just kind of disappeared and then his friend was super nice to me and we ended up getting together even though I didn't even really like him he was just really nice <laughs> I didn't have anyone so yeah I ended up getting pregnant with him and we were both potheads. We smoked way too much weed. And he had some moments where he would get angry for no reason. And just seemed a little crazy to me. And I didn't want him to be the dad. And I didn't want to be struggling. I didn't want to be poor. I wanted to be able to provide my child with what they needed. And I'm sure my parents would have helped me. But my mom talked me into getting an abortion I don't blame her but I don't understand like she grew up Catholic and like there is a difference between growing up going to church and just playing church and like actually knowing God and seeking him and reading his word because abortion is murder and it's not something that we should ever go through it's not something the baby should ever go through. Like, ever since I went through that, it was just... I don't want anyone to feel bad for me, but I just know that's not something that should happen. And it just, like, broke my heart. And I literally got pregnant again right after, and then I had another one. Like, I just have this, like, whole span of time from my past that I don't even remember. <sighs> and some guy that I met in World of Warcraft lived in Hawaii and I was just gonna go visit him for a couple weeks. 
And um, I ended up living there for a year. And I was working for his aunt at their accounting center. She had a, an accounting firm. I was a receptionist and I did bookkeeping. But um, I was just playing World of Warcraft and smoking weed and being perverted and gross and I randomly got a check in the mail from my grandma for $17,000 and my boyfriend at the time wanted me to buy drugs and he like got mad at me and like basically like threatened me to buy drugs and he got violent and abusive he was the first abusive relationship I was in um I ended up getting pregnant with him too. The first two abortions I had were surgical and the third was medical. And I did cocaine for the first time. I did ecstasy a few times. So I definitely did a lot of damage to my brain in the past. And I know God has been healing me, but I just, I made a lot of stupid choices in my past. But yeah, the medical abortion was very traumatic and um, I literally felt like I was dying. It's like, I, I feel like I felt the baby die. It was very, I don't even know how to explain it, but just getting like chills and hot flashes and fainting and not even, like I didn't have enough oxygen in my brain or something. I don't know what was happening, but I ended up calling my mom and telling her that he was abusive and she came and got me by surprise when I got out of there and on the plane home I met a woman and she wrote me a letter and it said that I just need to trust God and pray and that he will guide me on my path and that he has amazing plans for my future and I found that letter Shortly after my ex-boyfriend of four years died in a motorcycle accident in 2017. And our relationship was really rough. I used to get blacked out drunk on my Twitch broadcast back in the day. And I used to smoke weed before I would stream. And he uh, was a type 1 diabetic and he would drink to the point where he would black out and basically he was manifesting demons. He would be so angry for no reason. Like one time he just grabbed a knife and like came after me with it and then he stabbed the wall and literally he uh, locked himself in a bathroom once and he wasn't responding and being a type one of type one diabetic, I was concerned so I got a screwdriver and I took the door handle off to check on him. And when I opened the door, he hit me in the face so hard that my jaw was bruised and clicking and popping for a long time. But he started going to AA after that and he sobered up finally. But uh, it was a lot of physical abuse, but mostly mental abuse because he would just be so up and down with his emotions and um, it didn't end well like he was playing on my PlayStation 4 and I think I just asked him a question and he just kind of ignored me and seemed like he was mad for no reason and um, I asked him if he still loved me and he said no and I asked, if you really mean that, can you please look at me in the face and tell me that? 
and he did and I kind of just I lost it for a few minutes and I went on Facebook and posted stuff basically exposing him because nobody well two people knew about that side of him and his ex-girlfriends knew about that side of him but I was just like it was like a cry for help for anyone to just help him but I should have just privately messaged people about it I shouldn't have done that but I was so upset because I treated him very well like I cooked for him all the time I cleaned for him I made him breakfast in bed and I just loved him so much even though he treated me like crap for no reason sometimes and so many people told me I deserved better but I'd want to leave and then all of a sudden he'd turn around and be like the sweetest person ever so it's kind of manipulative, but like I, I still loved him like unconditionally. It was very unhealthy, but now I know it wasn't him and it was just demons. And I just wish I would have known what I know now back then, but he really broke my heart and that was still the worst year of my life, 2017. Because we broke up in May 2017 and I tried going back to school. I got really close to getting my associates in music, but I never did actually get it yet. Um, but one of our mutual rave friends invited me to a house party and I ended up hooking up with his roommate. And that was a bad idea. I just was drinking and smoking weed all the time just very close to death near death experiences from too much alcohol almost choking to death on my own vomit <laughs> and then while i was streaming i found out that he was in a motorcycle accident five months later And he bled internally within a few minutes. I found out before his parents even found out because his roommate didn't know his mom's number. Um, and I made the stupid mistake of trying to communicate with him, which is spiritually legal. It is necromancy. Don't try to communicate with the dead. I know people that are former psychic mediums. You're only channeling familiar spirits, which are demons. <sighs> All right. It's been almost 33 minutes, so I'm going to try to finish this. <laughs> this wasn't meant to be this long. <sighs> oh, I don't need to tell my whole life story, but like, it's just... I gotta explain why I had depression and anxiety and fear, but <clears throat> most fear, the most anxiety I ever felt was shortly after he died because of all the things I did that I shouldn't have done that are against God's spiritual and moral law. I learned that demons are real. I learned that Jesus Christ is Lord and that demons flee and stop attacking at the mention of his name. Like I would have sleep paralysis and I'd call out the name of Jesus and it would stop. Nightmares would end when I would just think on his name. And one time I was sleeping and I woke up and I was literally hovering over my body, seeing myself sleeping in bed. And I don't remember where I read it or learned it from, but I just said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And I got dropped back down into my body and I felt something like grab my boob. Yeah. Yeah. I was very perverted and I did things I talked about in another video that I don't even want to talk about because I thought I was interacting with my ex-boyfriend's spirit. And I went to a psychic medium. I went to a shaman healer. I went to a tarot card reader. And I did these things after I realized I was being demonically attacked and I found deliverance prayers online and things left me. So I went and did all these highly occultic things that are highly illegal according to God's spiritual and moral law. And the Bible says that when demons leave, they will be 
in dry places and they want to try to come back and if they have legal right to come back they'll come back with seven more demons stronger than themselves and then the person is worse off than before so yeah i got attacked really really bad because i did so many things i didn't even name all the things i did like i was trying to channel my higher self and spirit guides and using crystals and tarot cards and meditating I did yoga for over 18 years it's not just exercise um it's black magic it's witchcraft no matter what your intentions are like the positions are specifically made to channel demons aka false gods false deities and to yoke with brahmin which is what hindus believe to be the ultimate source of reality and the universe the source of creation whatever that's what yoga means to yoke with brahmin and like i even had stuff that i posted like on instagram and facebook with like the the, the hindu false god kali and I was like idolizing Kali for some reason and I used to love Jimi Hendrix and one of his album covers had freaking Hindu demons anyways I just I'm just so frustrated with the evil in this world these days um and just how much evil is pushed on us just like the indoctrination of evil and mind programming um, entertainment, movies, music, video games, stores, clothing, symbols. It's like everywhere. It's just, bleh. <laughs> Maranatha. If you don't know what that means, that means come, our Lord. <sighs> just get frustrated sometimes and just want Jesus to come back already. But anyway. I learned the hard way that demons are real, that Jesus is Lord, and that the Bible is actually true. And uh, I was being attacked so badly at night. Like, I literally heard things running around my house. I would just, like, sense things in the room. Um, electronics were being messed with. Like, I heard demons scream through the speakers of my phone when I, like, walked around and played a house cleansing prayer like and like mocking the guy that was praying and like screaming no and stuff and I even had a friend that I found through Facebook that is a former Hindu and it took him six years to get set free from all the demons that came in through that witchcraft and he would pray for me at like one o'clock in the morning and it's just such a precious man of God like he helped me so much when I I <laughs> I went to churches and where I lived at the time and like three of them, the pastors thought that, or no, two of them, the pastors thought that Christians couldn't have demons and none of them practiced, none of them actually casted demons out of people like Jesus said believers would be doing. These signs shall follow those that believe that they will cast out demons and speak in new tongues, lay hands on the sick and see them recover. And even raise the dead. Like I have friends now that have been raised from the dead or they have prayed for people that have been raised from the dead. And it's all by the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. And it's amazing. And it's so sad that there's so many believers that are just in this gummy bear, lukewarm Christianity. Oh, God is good. God is love. Yes, he is. But we're supposed to be walking in obedience and holiness and righteousness in Christ Jesus. We're supposed to be showing people the love of God. We're supposed to be being vessels for God to use us for his kingdom and his glory to see people get healed and set free, like to set the captives free, to show people that God is real, to give him the glory for his kingdom, for his glory, to bring the king kingdom of heaven down to earth man okay so yeah the attacks were really bad at night and um 
I found another, like he taught me like how powerful the scripture was and how to pray effectively using the word of God and praying in accordance to God's will and like doing spiritual warfare by just speaking the word of God out loud, declaring it over your life. Like I'm so thankful for that man. But um, yeah, I found another woman through some random Facebook group. Um, basically she said it was like the worst spiritual attack she'd ever seen in 10 years and she prayed for me and I felt stuff like flying by me my heart was racing I had, I had so much fear and anxiety because I had never gone through anything like this in my life I didn't know how to handle it and um she's like okay I'm gonna put the blood of Jesus around your heart right now and at this point, I already believed that Jesus was Lord because I, I, I saw like how powerful just saying his name was against the demonic attacks. And um, she put the blood of Jesus around my heart and I literally felt liquid heat around my heart. My heart slowed down and I just had this overwhelming peace all of a sudden. I went from so much fear and anxiety to just, oh my gosh, the best feeling ever in the world and so much love. Like, I never felt that kind of love before and I was just in awe because I didn't know that I could tangibly interact with God and that he was alive, like Jesus is alive. He is the Prince of Peace. God is love. The joy of the Lord is our strength. I was like, I need to go get baptized, like tomorrow. And I found a Baptist church and I got baptized in the name of Jesus. <sighs> I remember I went to like a, a Catholic church wanting to get exorcism and the priest had depression himself and was on like Prozac or something. He didn't think I had demons, <laughs> but I definitely did. Still getting deliverance to this day. But I got delivered from depression. I got delivered from anxiety. All fear is gone. Don't really have much mental torment anymore unless I'm around certain people or people are trying to do witchcraft or weird stuff like psychic witchcraft, mind control witchcraft. That's a thing. Probably sounds crazy to some people, but I don't care. It's a thing. There's a really great book called What Witches Don't Want Christians to Know that talks about it and pretty mind-blowing story and some similar things that I have gone through. Like, I need to make a whole nother video about that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was at a home fellowship Bible study. We were worshiping God, feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit. Someone got a word of knowledge that someone was going to get set free and healed of depression and anxiety. And I was like, me, me, me. So about six people came up to me and laid hands on me and prayed for me. My head felt like it was on fire for like two days before this too. And I, my head literally felt like a fireball when this was happening. And I just felt this weight leave my body. And I started weeping, crying, and I just felt this lightness and just this joy. Like I felt like a giddy little kid ever since then. I just, I just have that feeling of just this lightness and this joy that I, I don't remember ever having, except maybe when I was a little kid. But like I said, like, I don't remember a lot of my past. <sighs> There's so many other things I left out, but it doesn't matter. The main main thing I wanted to talk about is like God set me free and using the word of God, speaking scripture out loud against attacks of anxiety, against demonic attacks, using my authority in Christ against the demonic. Because like I said, like those are usually external attacks of the enemy trying to get you to come in agreement with fear trying to get you to come into agreement with anxiety and worry but God says do not fear for I am with you do not be dismayed for I am your God I will help you I will 
uphold you with my righteous right hand. I will fight for you. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Do not repay evil for evil, but just love your enemies and forgive everyone who's ever sinned against you. And just do good to others. Treat people the way you want to be treated. Bless those that curse you. If your enemy is hungry, feed them. If your enemy is thirsty, give them water. Give them something to drink. It may sound easier than done, but with God, nothing is impossible. Like depression is caused by a spirit of heaviness. And I learned about that from Derek Prince's book called They Shall Expel Demons. He actually had it himself and he casted demons out of people for over 40 years. And I keep coming across people that believe the lie that Christians can't have demons. They'll be like, oh, you weren't truly born again then, or you never had the Holy Spirit. I'm like, um, yes, I do. Thank you. <laughs> Deliverance is the children's bread. It's not for people that are in sin. Like that doesn't make any sense. Satan can't cast out Satan. It's like the same thing when the Pharisees were trying to accuse Jesus of casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub. Like, no, that's the, that's the work of God. That's the power of God setting the captives free. Like, please stop falsely accusing people. Please stop telling people that they were never saved. They were never born again because they have demons that they, they're still trying to get deliverance from. Just because you don't understand something doesn't mean someone isn't saved. Doesn't mean they don't have the Holy Spirit. There's nowhere in scripture that says that a believer can't have demons. People like to try to take scripture out of context to push their narrative. When we're born again, our spirit is made perfect in Christ. Like we're not instantly delivered of every single demon that ever came into our soul or our body. That's why there's believers, true followers, true men and women of God that are Holy Spirit filled, that have sicknesses and diseases and addictions and depression. Like, I've heard so many stories. I've seen it. I've casted demons out of other people. And when they get these demons cast out of them, the sick, they get healed. The sickness, the disease, the pain is gone. <sighs> like Jesus took every sin on the cross. Every pain, every sickness, every disease, every infirmity. It's like... I just wish more people would believe what the word of God says and understand their authority in Christ over the demonic. It's not doctrines of demons. What is of the kingdom of darkness is believing that casting out demons is not a good thing. Like, how is that not a good thing? The only people that I've seen complaining about it are probably... Like spiritual warfare could get pretty intense. Some people think that they're worse off after they've had like one deliverance session. It's like, yeah, the demons are mad that they got kicked out of where they've been living for years. <laughs> like you just got to fight the good fight of faith and use your authority in Christ. And just seek God with all your heart. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and die to self, crucify your flesh. Repent and renounce every sin, all darkness and evil. And just stay in the secret place and shift your focus to Jesus. Because when you do that, he keeps you in perfect peace. And when I started fasting in January 2020, that's when I got the revelation of why the first commandment is so important. That's like the key to everything. Love God with all of your heart and your mind and your soul and your strength. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. 
perfect love casts out all fear. I'm not afraid of anything anymore, except for sinning and being disobedient to God. Like he is the only one that anyone should fear. Literally, God, Elohim, El Elyon, the Most High God, Y-H-W-H, I don't know how to pronounce his name. I have Hebrew scholar friends that don't know how to pronounce his name, so I'm not going to try to say it's something that it, it may not be. They say Hashem, but I like to just say Abba. Adonai, which means Lord, and Yeshua HaMashiach. God is salvation, the anointed one, the Messiah. He is the one that sets us free. And the most powerful deliverance I had when I was alone with God in the secret place, just crying out to him on my knees, bowing my head to the ground, and really feeling sorry for all the evil I've done in my life. And I don't think I'm better than anyone else. I just want people to understand. God is real. And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And his ways are higher than our ways. This world is not always going to be this way. But he is sovereign over everything. And he established his law and Satan and demons legally are allowed to certain things. They're allowed to do certain things according to his law. When people have not been born again, people that have not come to God and truly repented and asked him for forgiveness, people that believe in vain and haven't repented and are still living in thin in sin and what they call greasy grace where they think it's okay to keep on sinning sin separates us from god the word of god says there will be people that believed in him that will say lord lord didn't we prophesy in your name and cast out demons And he will say, depart from me. I never knew you. You workers of iniquity. He said he'll spit out the lukewarm out of his mouth. I have people that call me religious or Pharisee sometimes. I get people coming from all kinds of beliefs and sides accusing me of things assuming my walk is not right with the Lord assuming I have some hidden sin <sighs> but they don't know my story we shouldn't assume things in our flesh like truly try to understand where someone's coming from ask God to give you compassion and to love others the way he loves us but I did Jesus said we'll be hated, we'll be mocked, we'll be persecuted, just like he was. And he went through a lot of rejection. And I can only imagine how much pain he feels from people denying him and mocking him constantly. I know I'm supposed to be talking about how I got set free from depression. I have. I'm just, I don't know. The presence of God is on me pretty hard right now. And this got longer than I wanted it to be. But the main point of this video was just to talk about if you really want freedom from any kind of mental illness, any kind of mental torment, Seek God. 
trust him, believe in the truth of Jesus Christ, that he is Lord, the word of God made flesh. I came to earth and died for our sins through his blood, made a new covenant with man. And he resurrected three days later and he's seated in heaven at the right hand of God, the father, the name that is above every name, the creator of all things. He holds everything into existence and gives us our every breath. He just wants us to love him and to love everyone else and forgive everyone. And I know it's not always easy, but if you ask God, if you seek him with all your heart, he promises to reveal and manifest himself to you. If you read the word of God out loud daily, it'll change your life. If you meditate on what God says and shift your focus to Jesus, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. Excuse me, burped. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That was one of my go-to scriptures for a while when I was like really going through intense warfare, attacks of anxiety and fear. And I would say, I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. If God is for me, who can be against me? No weapon formed against me shall prosper in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And just saying his name and just sometimes I would be like, Jesus, please help me. Yeshua HaMashiach is Lord. Praising his name. Like that's powerful too. Like I wish everyone would understand how powerful that is. And worshiping God in spirit and in truth because he inhabits the praises of his people. It ushers, ushers in his presence. It's just like every time I imagine that, I just like imagine just so much light, just like whew, just pushing out all the darkness and all the evil away. <laughs> That's why people literally manifest demons when they're in the presence of God somewhere like that, where God's presence manifests so strongly. People are doing weird stuff and screaming out and demons are fleeing. <laughs> God is so amazing. And it's just a really exciting life to be aware of the reality of the world we live in and the what's going on like i've only been revealed so much like i'll have like flashes of visions of of angels and demons fighting and i've had dreams where god has showed me like principalities of like 40 50 60 foot demons even taller probably 100 feet tall and it's just so comforting to know that I know the one true living God. And as long as I am loving him and loving people and being obedient to him, being obedient to my heavenly father and just trusting him, I have nothing to fear but him. So I really wanted to cover more scriptures. I should have. I might, I'm probably going to make another video and shorten it and like focus mostly on like how I use scripture to battle against the attacks of fear and anxiety and then share my story about getting set free from depression, the spirit of heaviness and the power of the weapons of our warfare, which is the word of God, worship, praise, fasting, prayer, and the blood sprinkling the blood of Jesus Christ Yeshua HaMashiach over yourself in faith like I've had witches and warlocks trying to attack me and like literally I'll do it every day and stuff breaks off of me and you can ask God to break off any witchcraft or any power of the kingdom of darkness off of you because there's some really evil people out there that are working for Satan for some reason. It doesn't make sense to me why you'd want to serve the one that wants to kill, steal, and destroy us. But some people just believe lies. And he can appear as an angel of light and fallen angels probably do the same. So a lot of people are deceived and um, it's really sad. 
because God just loves us so much and he really does want the best for us, but he doesn't want us to be doing evil. He doesn't want us to be in darkness. He wants us to have joy and peace and love everything that he is but in this life the world that we live in right now he said there will be tribulations there will be trouble and it's not easy but when you do get close to God through repentance to coming out of agreement with sin and evil and darkness and giving your life to him and believing in the truth of the Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, he fulfilled all the prophecies of the Messiah, the creator of the universe, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the highest authority in the spirit realm, the name that is above every name, Yeshua HaMashiach, hallelujah. Like literally just worshiping him just puts me in such a good mood. So I think I'm going to do that now and end the video so it doesn't end up being two hours long again, like my testimony video. <laughs> this was kind of a testimony video. Oh, Lord. I'll get better at, at making videos. Hopefully, please help me be better at making videos. Abba. <laughs> and Yeshua, oh, Mashiach's mighty name. I pray. Amen. But yeah. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. Jesus said he did not come to bring peace, but he came to bring a sword and to destroy the works of the devil. The devil is defeated by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And we do not love our lives to the death. My life is no longer my own. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So yeah, I want to sing a song now. <laughs> I didn't even pull up the chords that I need. I was not even prepared. I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this video like 20 minutes and it's going to be great. All right, let's go. Here we go. <laughs> oh, Lord. Help me, please. Help me, please get good at making YouTube's videos, please. <sighs> I just, I've, I've never been the best storyteller. Like most of my life, I was so shy. I hardly ever talked to anyone. And now, I don't know, do most of my talking on my broadcast. But I do talk to people in real life sometimes. Just, it's weird how I like stutter sometimes. Like I don't remember like when that started. I feel like it didn't start until like after... I don't know. I don't know, actually, when the stuttering started. It just randomly happens. All right. So I want to sing Amazing Grace and play my ukulele. I think I play it in the key of C. Yeah. Okay. Abba Father, Heavenly Father, I pray that whoever listens and watches this video, uh, that they will get deliverance and healing when I sing this song and play my ukulele and worship to you. And I thank you. And Yeshua HaMashiach's mighty name, I pray. Amen.
There's grace that's on my heart to feel And grace my fears relieved How precious did that grace appear in the My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending Amazing grace The Lord has promised good to me His word, my hope, secure As long as life endures, my chains are gone. I've been set free, my God. Unending love, amazing grace, my chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me. Unending love, amazing grace, the earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine, will be forever You are forever mine. <sighs> Hallelujah. Jesus said he will never leave us nor forsake us. 
And there is no love greater than God's love for us. God is love. There is no high like the most high. <laughs> like I literally feel right now like I can't even compare it to other feelings. But like better than any drug I ever used to do. It's just the best feeling ever to just be in the joy of the Lord. To feel the love of God. To be in God's presence. And to feel his peace. Like, I just want to feel like that all the time. I just want to worship him all the time. If I could just worship God 24-7, I would do that. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like I left out really important stuff. So I'm definitely going to make another video. So this was just like a rough draft <laughs> of the video I wanted to make. So I'll make a condensed version of it and actually edit it to put the scripture like on the screen and uh share more scriptures that held to me like i have whole notebooks full of just scripture from 2020 literally just fasting and praying and reading scripture like for hours and hours and hours and just praying and worshiping god making up my own songs that i need to get recorded. I just need to get a better microphone. So I definitely could use help if anyone wants to, um, pitch in for me to get a better microphone. I know to some people this might sound good, but this is like a little over a hundred dollars and I just want to get like a really good quality microphone so I can really make, um, high quality recording of my vocals and get some worship music out there into the world to bring healing and deliverance to people for God to use me and just flow through the music that I make Holy Spirit have your way our Father who art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever in Yeshua HaMashiach's mighty name I pray Amen <sighs> so thanks for watching sorry this was so long winded and I probably talked about things that were not the most helpful but I just wanted people to understand like how I got to the point of being so depressed and I left out a lot of stuff actually like stuff I don't even know what happened because I blacked out but I'm pretty sure I got raped possibly multiple times had to break off a lot of ungodly soul ties with people got a lot of deliverance just from doing that and commanding any unclean spirits any demons that came in through ungodly soul ties to go in the name of Jesus it was very powerful and uh, I can make another video about that too <laughs> anyway God bless you all Shalom, shalom, shalom. I'm going to go live on Twitch now after I upload this video. So hopefully I'll see you there. Come say hi someday. If not, may Adonai bless you and keep you. May Adonai make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Adonai lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom, wholeness, tranquility, the peace that surpasses all understanding, prosperity, all the good things that Shalom means, I love Hebrew because it has multiple meanings and it's just, I don't know, it's so beautiful to me. All right. Love you guys. Bye for now. Take care. Thanks for watching.